let me discuss the next group of drugs that is mitotic spindle inhibitors so next we have what is called as mitotic spindle inhibitors now so if you take this mitotic spindle inhibitors under this we have a group of drugs which are called as the vinca alkaloids right under this we have a group of drugs called as the vinca alkaloids now what are the examples of this vinca alkaloids vinca alkaloids remember they include vincristin then we have vinblastin right then we have vinblastin and lastly we have one drug which is called as vinorelbin right we know relbin so these are the drugs under your vinca alkaloids remember these drugs are vinca alkaloids and what is the mechanism of action of these drugs remember they act by inhibiting the polymerization of the microtubules right they act by inhibiting polymerization of microtubules right they act by inhibiting the polymerization of the microtubules now now what is the purpose of polymerization of the microtubules remember the purpose of polymerization of the microtubules in the cell division is for the formation of the mitotic spindle right if you take the course of the cell division the mitotic spindle formation is very much required now once the polymerization of the microtubules does not occur thereby what will happen is thus inhibiting thus inhibiting the formation of right thus inhibiting the formation of the mitotic spindle now now if you see here like in the cell cycle like we have discussed g0 g1 g2 s phase and as well as m phase right now in which particular phase of the cell cycle the mitotic spindle formation is required remember mitotic spindle formation is very much required during m phase of the cell cycle so now because the mitotic spindle formation occurs during the m phase of the cell cycle and these drugs are inhibiting the polymerization of the microtubules and thereby inhibiting the formation of the mitotic spindle now in which particular phase of the cell cycle these vinca alkaloids are useful remember these are effective in m phase of the cell cycle right these are effective in m phase of right these are effective in m phase of the cell cycle now among these three drugs that is vincristin vinblastin and as we know relbin remember vinblastin is the drug which causes bone marrow suppression right so this vinblastin can cause the bone marrow suppression whereas you take vincristin right you take vincristin vincristin is bone marrow sparing but the problem with the vincristin is it is neurotoxic it will cause peripheral neuropathy right so vincristin it is marrow sparing all right it is marrow sparing right but what is this this is neurotoxic so it will cause what is called as the peripheral neuropathy right it will cause what is called as the peripheral neuropathy now now you take all these vinca alkaloids the very important adverse effect associated with this vinca alkaloids is remember this vinca alkaloids can cause what is called as sadh right sadh it stands for syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone so that is the clinical condition where there is excessive secretion of the antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary that is what is called as the sadh next now you take this vinblastin vinblastin will cause what it will cause bone marrow suppression remember vinblastin's most important clinical use is the curative therapy of metastatic testicular tumors right so where do we use this particular vinblastin is right if you take the uses of this vinblastin it is important clinical use is the curative therapy of metastatic testicular tumors right metastatic testicular tumors so this is the important use of this particular vinblastin now you take this vincristin remember vincristin along with glucocorticoids it is used in the treatment of the remission in childhood leukemias so 
remember this particular combination that is vincristin plus glucocorticoids okay so this particular combination it is the treatment of choice right this is considered as the treatment of choice for inducing remission in childhood leukemias right for inducing remission in childhood leukemias all right next now the other point is you take this vincristin vincristin can also be used for pediatric solid tumors now what are those pediatric solid tumors they include like wilms tumor neuroblastoma and as well as the rhabdomyosarcoma right so this particular vincristin it is also used for the treatment of the solid tumors right also used for the treatment of solid tumors so if you take this particular solid tumors they include number 1 wilms tumor second one is rhabdomyosarcoma and the last one is your neuroblastoma right the last one is your neuroblastoma now what is your wilms tumor wilms tumor is a tumor which is originating from the kidney and it is one of the solid tumors so remember all these are your pediatric solid tumors right pediatric solid tumors next remember this particular vincristin not only used in the treatment of the pediatric solid tumors it is also used in the treatment of lymphomas right also used in the treatment of lymphomas right so this is about your mitotic spindle inhibitors so let me shortly revise about this particular vinca alkaloids the drugs in the vinca alkaloids include vincristin vinblastin and as well as vinorelbin all these are vinca alkaloids and how do they act they act by inhibiting the polymerization of the microtubules and thus inhibiting the formation of the mitotic spindle and therefore these are the drugs which are effective in m phase of the cell cycle now you take vinblastin the adverse effect associated with the vinblastin is it will cause the bone marrow suppression whereas you take vincristin it is marrow sparing but it is neurotoxic that is vincristin can cause peripheral neuropathy and all these vinca alkaloids can also result in the adverse effect that is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone now you take the vinblastin vinblastin most important clinical use is the curative therapy of metastatic testicular tumors now remember vincristin along with this particular glucocorticoids it is the treatment of choice for inducing remission in childhood leukemias now the other important point is this particular vincristin can also be used for pediatric solid tumors like wilms tumor neuroblastoma and rhabdomyosarcoma and not only that it is also used in the treatment of lymphoma now let me discuss the other group of the mitotic spindle inhibitors they include what is called as taxins right they include what is called as taxins now if you take the important drugs under this particular taxins they include what is called as paclitaxel and as well as docetaxel so we have paclitaxel and as well as docetaxel so the important taxins they include paclitaxel and as well as the docetaxel now what does these drugs do remember if you see the mechanism of action of these particular paclitaxel and docetaxel they interfere with the mitotic spindle formation right they interfere with mitotic spindle formation all right now the other point what you should remember here is they are interfering with the mitotic spindle formation once they interfere with the mitotic spindle formation thereby they prevent disassembly of the microtubules right so interfere with the mitotic spindle formation by preventing all right by preventing the disassembly of disassembly of the microtubules now among these two drugs you take this particular paclitaxel paclitaxel is the drug which will cause hypersensitivity reactions right paclitaxel is the drug which will cause the hypersensitivity reactions now 
Why? What is the reason for the hypersensitivity reaction which is caused by paclitaxel? Remember, the vehicle which is required for the transportation of the paclitaxel is cremophore containing vehicle. Right? So, for the transportation of the paclitaxel, we require a vehicle. So, paclitaxel, it causes hypersensitivity reactions. Now, what is the reason for the paclitaxel causing hypersensitivity reaction is, paclitaxel, it requires a vehicle for its transportation. So, what is the vehicle? It is cremophore containing vehicle. So, due to cremophore containing vehicle, this paclitaxel can cause the hypersensitivity reactions. Alright? So, due to, alright? So, due to the presence of the cremophore containing vehicle, this particular paclitaxel can cause the hypersensitivity reactions. Whereas, you take this particular drug that is docetaxel. Docetaxel, it is devoid of this particular hypersensitivity reactions. So, with this docetaxel, there is no hypersensitivity reactions. Right? There is no hypersensitivity reactions. Now, we have a new formulation of this particular paclitaxel it is a protein bound formulation. So, protein bound paclitaxel that is called as NAB paclitaxel, right? So, NAB paclitaxel, remember this is protein bound, right? Remember this point, this is protein bound. Now, what is the advantage of this particular NAB paclitaxel? The advantage of this NAB paclitaxel is that it has decreased risk of the hypersensitivity reactions. Alright, it has decreased risk of the hypersensitivity reactions. And remember, both of these drugs can cause bone marrow suppression and neurotoxicity, right? That is paclitaxel and as well as the docetaxel. Both of these drugs can cause the bone marrow suppression and as well as the neurotoxicity. So, both of these drugs, they are associated with the bone marrow suppression and along with that, these drugs will also cause the neurotoxicity now now remember we have a drug which is called as the cisplatin what the cisplatin do is cisplatin it has a drug interaction with the paclitaxel cisplatin it decreases the paclitaxel clearance whereas you take the paclitaxel paclitaxel can decrease the doxorubicin clearance all right so if you see the drug interactions of the paclitaxel so, we have a drug which is called as cisplatin. What does this cisplatin will do? Remember, cisplatin decreases paclitaxel clearance. Whereas, like you take the paclitaxel itself. Paclitaxel, remember, this particular paclitaxel can decrease, right? This particular paclitaxel can decrease the doxorubicin clearance all right so these are the two very important points regarding the paclitaxel drug interactions now apart from this particular paclitaxel and as well as docetaxel we have a drug which is called as cabazitaxel right we have a drug which is called as the cabazitaxel remember cabazitaxel it is also a microtubule inhibitor and where is this indicated it is indicated in combination with prednisolone for hormone refractory metastatic prostate cancer all right so it is a microtubule inhibitor right it is a microtubule inhibitor and a point is this particular cabazitaxel along with prednisone right along with prednisone it is used for hormone refractory metastatic prostate cancer hormone right hormone refractory metastatic prostate carcinoma all right that is about your cabazitaxel next like we have a drug which is called as ixabepilone right we have a drug which is called as ixabepilone remember ixabepilone this is a new drug which is approved for the treatment of advanced breast carcinoma which is resistant to anthracyclines and taxanes okay so this is a new drug that is one important point and it is used in the treatment of breast carcinoma which is resistant right which is resistant to anthracyclines 
right which is resistant to anthracyclines and as well as taxanes so this is the advantage of this particular ixabepilone remember this particular ixabepilone it is given in combination with the capacitabine right so this ixabepilone this is given in combination with capacitabine now a point what you should remember here is this is given in combination with the capacitabine now if you see the mechanism of action of this particular ixabepilone remember it acts by binding to the tubulin within the cell cycle or within the cell and by binding to the tubulin it promotes the microtubule stabilization and thereby arresting the cell in G2M phase of the cell cycle. So what is your ixabepilone doing? Ixabepilone is arresting the cell cycle at G2M phase. Right? Arresting the cell cycle at G2M phase. So how does it do? It acts by binding to the tubulin and promoting the microtubule stabilization and thereby arresting the cells in G2M phase of the cell cycle. Now let me shortly revise up to here what we have discussed. We have another group of mitotic spindle inhibitors that is your taxanes. The drugs include paclitaxel and docetaxel. They interfere with the mitotic spindle formation by preventing disassembly of the microtubules. Now you take this paclitaxel. Paclitaxel causes hypersensitivity reactions whereas docetaxel is devoid of this particular adverse effect. And what is the reason for the paclitaxel causing hypersensitivity reaction is it contains the cremophore transportation vehicle and that is responsible for the hypersensitivity reactions. And you have a protein bound formulation of this particular paclitaxel and that is called as NAP paclitaxel and it is having decreased risk of hypersensitivity reactions. Next, both of these drugs can cause the bone marrow suppression and as well as the neurotoxicity. Next, you have a drug called cisplatin. Cisplatin decreases the paclitaxel clearance, whereas paclitaxel can decrease the doxorubicin clearance. Then we have a drug called as cabazitaxel. It is a microtubule inhibitor and it is indicated in combination with the prednisone for hormone refractory metastatic prostate cancer. We have another drug that is called as ixabepilone. It is a new drug which is approved for the treatment of advanced breast carcinoma resistant to anthracyclines and as well as taxanes. And remember, it is given in combination with the capacitabine. Now, if you see the mechanism of action of this particular drug, it acts by binding to the tubulin and promote the microtubule stabilization and thereby arresting the cell in the G2 phase of the cell cycle.